Oh, chat. I hit the oh. wrong. Oh, I hit the wrong open. Oh. Oh, I'm Lamp sorry. Hold on. Hold on. Let's do that again. Hold on. We, we got to start the real one. Hold on. Here we go. Sorry, we had to do it we're just because we're talking about lamp. Uh, we should have stuck with it. We I know we should probably it. should have. I may go back and change the background, but we're yeah, <laughs> we're gadget talk. But hey, I made that open. It's, it's a shame that we only used it once. <laughs> you got to use it more often. <laughs> so, but hey, I want to welcome everybody in here. Um, I like what uh, Tricash just said here. We're doing we're talking about LPCs, and Chad's going to be making a gadget LPC. It's going to be the large perfect cash. So that's, oh, I that's like it. that. I haven't heard that before. I'm yeah, gonna have I haven't either. That. So that that's so. Trikash says that. Uh, welcome, Darren from Australia. We got Martin in here. Tom Brotherman's here with us tonight. Electric Water Boy, MacGyver and Flow, Engineer Forty Two, uh, waiting to find out um, the three D printed the entire lamp post. Did I've had some ideas. I'm going to share some idea. several okay. ideas tonight. Uh, let's see here. Who else have we got? DJW House is here with us tonight um, from the Flatlands. Uh, let's see here. Bell on the move. LPC talk. Woohoo. Yep, pretty much. That's what we're going to be doing. Um, except Chad doesn't do a very good Australian accent. So no, I'm, I'm not good with that. Otherwise, we could have. We could have done that. <laughs> so, and GC. I would have to get a hat. Right? Uh, Mini Mag is with us tonight. And then also Teresa Rogers down from Texas. So, all right. I believe they had the Meg. I believe uh, Mini Meg and uh, uh, Bill on the Move. What they had a Mega last weekend, or was that two weeks ago? Down there in California. Sure. I know there's one in so. California, and I, it, it was either last weekend or the weekend before. I don't remember. Yeah, so. I know there's Hopefully one went well. going over in Europe right now, or this week in Europe, because I've seen several pictures from over there, and I think Brian Roth is over there right now as well. Um, so. I'm so glad to see events opening up all over around the world again. That's, that's really cool. Um, mm -hmm. Speaking of events, we are still needing some roadies. we got some um, places that are still available for roadies to come in and join us. Um, and I am dropping the link inside the, the chat right now. So if you would like to be a roadie, uh, go see there. There's some slots open. And let me tell you, there is a really cool coin. Um, I've seen pictures of it completely done now um, that only roadies will get the coin. Right. You got to so, volunteer to get the coin. You got to volunteer and get the coin. And it is a really cool coin. It's three, it's another three inch coin. So it's a big coin. It's not one of these little small coins. It's a really cool, um, very unique to cash fest. Um, that we're doing this whole theme, all of it works together. So you do not want to miss getting that coin. Um, if you want to volunteer and we need a lot of help. So there's got so much going on. Um, we, what is it? 13 events. One, two, yeah, there's three, a lot. Four, it's five, going to three, be a seven, fun, eight. busy week. 11 events, 11, 12 events. Yeah. Cause starting on Tuesday, sorry, starting on Wednesday, two events every single day, all the way to Saturday and then another event on Sunday. So, yeah, there's a lot of events where we're going to need a lot of help doing different stuff and all over the place. So, um, so yeah, go ahead and sign up to be a roadie. Um, really need your help. And then, like I said, if you're a roadie, um, you will, you'll you'll get that coin. I think you have to volunteer for at least an, an hour or two hours during that day, during the, that week. It's a session, I think, at least one session, which I think is right. an hour. But double check the site. Yeah. So double check that. Um, our roadie manager will, get in con will help with all that. And so... Um, it'll be really a lot of fun. Uh, you don't want to miss that. So, but before we get to anywhere else, before we get into Chad's LPC, we need to go ahead and take care of our sponsors. So let's go ahead and take care of them now. If you have not become a patron of the Geocache Talk Network, what are you waiting for? Patron levels start as low as a bison tube level at $3 a month. To sign up is easy. Simply go to the Geocache Talk website and click on the Become a Patron button or go to patreon.com forward slash geocache talk. Patrons now get the famous blackout coin, invites to special events, and other really great items throughout the year. 
Become a patron today. Logwork, the creators of the fantastic logbook made with genuine right in the rain paper. The logbook's designed for the micro containers of the present and future, geared towards the hider who'd rather go cashing than doing cash maintenance. Find them at logwork.com. That's L O G W E R K.com. Have you subscribed to FTF Magazine yet? FTF Magazine is the number one geocaching magazine available. It is a quarterly magazine that you can be part of. Submit your geocaching milestones and adventures to be published. FTF Magazine is also interactive with puzzles to solve and the hunt to find Spartacus. If you can solve the puzzle or find Spartacus, then you will be entered in to win a special path tag. Every new subscription, you will receive a special swag pack. Subscribing is easy. Just visit FTF's website, ftfgeo.com. Don't miss out and subscribe today. Oops. All right. <laughs> I got up. I thought we still had more commercial. <laughs> There's a new blue line that goes across the screen on our sides now. So we can see where it's running. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm looking at here. Uh, a bell on the move said it was May 7th was the event, and it was awesome. And That's great, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's uh, yeah. I like I said, I just absolutely love that events are opening back up, and they're starting to be everywhere. So, all right, Chad, enough jibber-jabber. Okay. <laughs> what, let's, I don't know. I like to jibber-jabber. I know. I do, too, but... We, okay. I want to see. I'm excited about this. I'm, I, we've, because we've talked about LPC gadget caches, and we're saying if we could do something with an LPC, besides it just being, and those that, if this is your first time, LPC stands for lamp post cache, um, or large so perfect cache. Large perfect cache is what I want. It's, it's going to be a large perfect cache. Um, but for those that are in different countries, there we have these posts, lamp posts that have these little the skirts or the trim around the t- top of them. Um, do we want to show that? Pi- no, that, that's not that picture. We don't have that picture up here. Um, I may pull one, but it, it lifts up. If you're in the U.S., you know what it is. But those that watch in other countries, that's that's what what it is. They lift up, um, and the cache is there. The square cover covers the bolts pretty much. It's a uh, yeah. It's made to to make it look a little more attractive. Uh, right. So that, and they're, they're a dime a dozen. The first few you find here in the U S it's like, Oh, that's like the coolest thing in the world. Then, then you realize there's like, so there's what three, 4 million in the, in the world. About a million of those are lamppost caches in the U S I think. So, um, so you realize, you know, these are everywhere, but we've always talked about how can you make one of those more exciting? And I've seen some really creative ways, but I'm really excited of seeing how, Chad's going to create a gadget lamppost. You too. I'm excited to see. <laughs> um, we're going to make it up as we go. Actually, we'll, we're going to talk about different ways to make one. I have several different ideas uh, on how to make one or what we can do. So, um, you know, we can kind of build one here. I might take some ideas from here, build one, maybe build two, do build one that I want to do. And then one that we talk about on the show. Okay. Um, but we'll see. Um, you know, talking about lamp per, lamp post caches. My first one I found, I didn't even think about lifting up the skirt. I knew they lifted, but I looked everywhere and there's a drain, and I knew uh in drains that people would put like a fishing string with the right. bison on the end. And we we looked, we spent like an hour and a half and DNF'd it and then end up finding one somewhere else. And I went back to that same spot and found it. So and I thought, oh, that's really cool. But you're right, after you find a couple hundred of them, it's like okay. That's, that's yeah, and, enough. and that's and that's one thing with about the new new cashers. And I just saw a post today, somebody explaining on Facebook, um, and I don't remember which group it was, but she was explaining the cash app it brings me to the right in the middle of this parking lot. There's nothing here, <laughs> and so that's yeah. So and like Tom Brotherman just said, post put here, um, some LPCs are better than others. Yeah, and I've seen some p- pictures of some that were like the whole little village underneath there, and those are really cool. Um, I think those are amazing. I actually considered doing one, um, but not tonight. In fact, <laughs> this is an LPC cache, uh, <laughs> but it could be maybe not. A spring snake in the, in, in the container makes opening the container fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nothing here to sell lamp Yeah, posts. Yeah, Bell in the Move saying, I love LPC. I don't know, I've heard that nothing post. Here, just that the lamp post. <laughs> That's cool. I've had people complain when I was, when I first started caching, my mic came off. Um, I uh, was hiding LPCs to hot to save spots. And I would get people complaining all the time about, we don't need another LPC out here. 
and stuff. Well, that and, clicks uh, further back, Chad. Click it clicks on the wire. Is that where it clicks? Yep, it clicks all the way back in the back on the wire part on the headset. Oh, that's why it keeps popping off. Thanks, Derek. Yeah. Got to be smarter than the mic, I guess. <laughs> oh yeah, that well, fits a lot better. I was forcing it on there. I was like, what? Okay. I right, am. We're back. There we go. Okay. So. <laughs> Um, anyway, so people were complaining about it and I was like, what's the big deal? It's a cash. But now I understand the complaint because it's like, oh man, all you need is another lamppost, but yeah. I will use them to save a spot. So I'll put one in just to save a spot for me to put, have time to build something. Okay. I mean, that's, uh, LPC. I'll try and come up with an acronym for that for, for holding a spot. And if, if you come yeah. up with one before I do. Put it in the chat. I'd love to see it. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so I have a property that we have some lamp posts on and now actually for years, I've wanted to make this and I kind of made a mock-up of it and I ended up throwing it away because I was not a hundred percent in love with it. Um, right. And then, you know, you end up collecting so much stuff. You just got to clean out sometimes. Um, but uh let's here let's pull up that picture of the lamp skirt so lamp, lamp posts typically have an access port for electrical uh on them and so this is one here um that i have and so there's a panel that goes over the front of that um that screws on and right. so what i want to do is build the cash container in there that has that cover that will open up and so it will look like it needs to be there but it will actually open up on its own once you push a button. My thought was a button underneath the lamp skirt. So you'll go, you'll lift the lamp skirt up and there'll be a, a piece of electrical box here. And so Something down there. this picture here kind of shows it's kind of really bad. I actually took these this morning at like uh, 3 30 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, underneath what you're looking at there is you got the bottom of your lamp skirt and you got your concrete. Uh, right. Uh, block or you got your your ground or whatever the yeah the pad and so there's a gap there because there's bolts that you use to level out or plumb up i guess uh the lamp the post itself and there's a gap there where you can see wires going up and down the, the power for the post so i can actually run the wire through there underneath between that block and the and the steel and then back up into the lamp skirt so i don't have to drill any holes in this lamp skirt at all um so i'm actually not going to do anything to to uh to, to post. Yeah. change it yeah so it'll be fairly simple all right so, so let me let's go back to this picture here now okay. would you do it as a fake side or would you actually be able to cover that up so you're not seeing those exposed wires you wouldn't see any of that that would not be exposed at all okay, okay. Uh, it would look like the covers on there and then when it opens up it would just be a container um okay. i'll show you i mocked one up actually um okay. real quick oh, and, so and as you're getting doing that they i've the um, group is in their legally property, legal property of Chad. Um, <laughs> is what Tom said. And then we got DS Mavis said LPC equals later possible cash. I like that later possible cash. Yeah. That's uh that's pretty good. We're getting, we're going to have to write this stuff down before I forget. Um, yeah. So what covers up those wires is a panel. And you know, what's funny is I grab the panel off of there and I put it in my car and then I took it out to uh, wash it off because it was really dirty, and I left yeah. it in my building. So, so <laughs> anyways, this is it. I have the size of it. I just cut this out of cardboard. I, I mock a lot of stuff up out of cardboard because, right. especially nowadays, uh, products and, and material is expensive. Right. Uh, and cardboard's cheap. We get so many Amazon deliveries. Um, I just <laughs> use their boxes. And and I, I just cut everything out of cardboard, mock it up. Uh, and then that way I'm not wasting good material. So right, right. Get, this is what the cover will look like. I'll paint it actually be, I'll use the exact cover that was on there. Uh, and so it will match everything. Um, so anyway, this is what the cover will look like. It will sit on that lamp post and behind it is going to be this. So okay. it will actually sit this way. Uh, and so this will sit over the front of it. And I haven't decided how to make it exactly so it doesn't look so thick. But uh, and then this will once you push the the button or however you access it, this will pop open that front panel, and then you'll have access to the cache. Right. Um, okay. So um, yeah. Now, um, 
the reason why, if you look at this as being offset, is if you go back to that photo, um, there's a yeah, grounding the, bolt there right, to the uh, left. left. Of it. Yeah. Yeah. And so that takes up some space there. And obviously, I can't get rid of that. All no. those other wires, I can push back there another six inches if I want. Um, but that grounding bolt, I can't do anything with because I'm not going to take it off and re weld it somewhere or, or anything. So uh, I'm just going to make this simple without modifying the lamp post at all. Um, so, okay. So we can go back to here to the, <clears throat> to me. Um, so, and then it's only uh, two, two inches, inches deep. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it's going to be really simple. So, again, this is cardboard, mocked it up real quick. Um, I'll actually take this out tomorrow morning and test it, fit it uh, in there um, okay. and see if I have a little bit more room, I might make it bigger. Um, but and then what I'll do is end up just putting a different container inside here because this is not going to be waterproof. This is not going to be watertight. I don't, I don't see how I could make it watertight because you're always going to have a little gap there. Right. Um, so in between the lamp post and the door. Um, so I'll stick it in like a bison tube or right in the rain or a log works probably right, uh, right. container. So, uh, now, and then you, I'm sure people will put swag in here. Yeah. And and you said that you're going to have a button that's going to be able to activate it. Yeah. So underneath, so this will sit up there. Um, so I had two ideas. If you don't want to run a button and you want to make it really simple with a tot, um, then drain holes in the very back bottom. That's a good idea, Tom. I could actually even slope the this bottom part forward uh, five degrees so water would come out. Or you could slope it back and put a hole. But I'd rather have the water go out of the lamppost than in, but it really doesn't matter. So one of my thoughts was, if you don't want to use a button and do any wiring, to make it really, really simple would be using one of these child locks. So you stick one of these on there, and we've all seen these before, right? Yeah. If you stick this on there, then you just have to bring a tot, a magnet. And once you put that on there, it closes it. Let's see if I can make that work, right? So that opens and closes. So um, you could actually put that on the door itself and just make them bring a tot, and they don't have to worry about anything. Now, would it be a lamppost cache? Maybe. I'm not sure. Oh, uh, sorry. This is funny. Uh, so Bill and Move wants to know, when your Amazon packages arrive, does your kids say, Daddy, your geocache stuff is here? Or is that just me? <laughs> <laughs> My kids don't. My son <laughs> can care less. My dogs, they hate the Amazon people. Well, they see them daily. Yeah. <laughs> and UPS and FedEx. Now. Oh, man, they know those trucks. When they come down the street, they start barking right away. I know when there's a delivery. Yeah, that's same here. It's crazy. So now, that's how you can make it without making it. It's still a gadget cache, right? Because it right. requires some kind of tool or mechanism to open the cache. So, or a mechanism. So... Or what you could do is run a wire down into that lower area underneath the lamppost right. and have a piece of conduit here, uh, a junction box like this, and then just stick a button. My thought was just to stick a button this way or like I've done in the past where I actually put a cap in here and put a button inside. So you actually have to push, you have to actually put your finger inside this hole to push the button. Um, see, I think I have one here somewhere. I'll grab it. But right. anyways, you could just have this down below uh, mounted and this on there. Um, if you did a bigger one, depending on how much room you have underneath your lamp post, um, there's several different size lamp posts. And then depending on how right. high they had to mount it to plummet, um, you know, you may have more room, you may have right. less. Um, now, you could actually put your battery inside here as well. Um, then I'd put obviously security screws on it so you can't get to it. Now you can get these in several, several sizes, which... I don't have. I probably should have stood up for this. But uh, there's all kinds of sizes of these. Um, and then also to show one other idea I had uh, here. It's a problem when you get right. too much stuff. So, you can't ever find it. Right. So when I'm, I'm looking at some of the... There's some questions in here that we can kind of field real quick. Um, okay. One from Nemlo07. But is it illegal to do on someone's light post? Uh, so this one is Chad's actually doing this on a property that he that he owns. So that's so th yes, it's his light lamp post. So he can actually do that. Yeah, then, I wouldn't recommend doing it without 
permission. You should never hide anything without permission. Right. But yeah, no, no. And then DS uh, Mavis says, "What are the legal slash permission safety ramifications of opening the electrical access hatch and inserting cache cavity? Seems that it might be a no no." Um, and that's where that's where we're keeping it away from the wires and everything as well. Yeah, um, you're not going to so be able to touch them. Um, now yourself is doing it. You're you're not touching electrical, <clears throat> but you always need to ask permission. Right, and talk to someone about doing it and making sure the the landowner or manager is comfortable with you doing this. Yeah. Um, so this isn't one I'm recommending other people to, well, you can make it, but you need to get permission. Um, right. These light posts actually are bigger. They run off a 480 volt um, versus a lot of them are 277. Um, okay. So you wouldn't want to be run, <laughs> just reaching sure. your hand in there, but you know, you need to talk to the landowner. You need to talk to the property owner and make sure, um, there's a lot of issues sometimes with, uh, putting stuff on private property, because if you're there geocaching, and you get hurt. Are you coming to me to have the owner claim that on our insurance, right? Are you going to sue us over it? Um, it happens all the time when people come onto your lot and they trip on a rock and then they want to sue you. So you need to definitely make sure you get permission. Right. And yes, I mean, doing with wires, I mean, Bella Moves saying uh, playing near wires is a bit scary. Darren, who's in Australia, says anything near an electrical post, cabinet, or switchboard will never get past reviews here, regardless of permission. <laughs> For you will light up your world. Well, it might make you black out a little bit. <laughs> it may make your world go dark a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I've not been shocked by 277. I got shocked by several times, but 480, no. No. So, right. So, luckily, just, I have the access to shut the power off to put it in, but the wire's there. I just got to push this in. It's good to go. So, Always check it. <laughs> Always check for it. Yeah. But here in the U.S., we can put them next to electrical panel, electrical posts. You need to label them. You know, you need to make sure the owners know, and you need to make sure that uh, when you put it in your description, it's clearly labeled uh, right. because people will try and get into every panel they can, and you don't want that. Right. So when you put this out, are you going to have the ge your geocache sticker on there? Like I always put cache? stickers. In fact, like, in fact, last week we showed the stickers I put on. Right. Yes, my caches always have a geocache. They they actually say geocache on them. So right. and they'll be right. Not, I mean, you've had people come up like, well, it's not here. It it says geocache right on it. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, this one will probably won't have a geocache sticker on because it's a lamp post. You got to lift it up. You're not going to be touching any. It, none of it will be close to anything for you. So, um. But anyway, um. Right. It will it will be very obvious, but yeah, get permission. You know, make sure you're comfortable with what you're doing. Yeah. Um, the other thought was instead of remaking this out of a whole th whole new thing, you could actually make this and then just put one of these on the back side of it. Yeah, that's um, true. Right, and just right. make make the holes to screw this in. Right, right. Or you get three D print this whole setup. Um, if you want, so and then you right. have room, you have your wire, your latch, whatever you want on there. But for me, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and make this. So, are you making that? What what type of material are you gonna do that in? Are you gonna do that in wood? Or are you gonna do that in plastic? What are you gonna cut it? I want to do it in, in. Um, I'm not gonna do it in wood. My thought was acrylic. I thought PVC. The front of it is going to have to be metal, and then I thought about some sheet metal for the part that actually holds it to the light skirt. Okay. That way it's thin. Uh, it doesn't stick out because if you did two big pieces <clears throat> like yeah, this, it like, would stick yeah, out really yeah. far. Um, and I don't want it to. So I thought about using some tin or sheet metal for this part here and then attaching it to some something, acrylic or, or something. I'm not sure yet exactly how I want to do that. Um, the whole thing would be easy out of acrylic. And I guess I could make this out of a thin acrylic piece too as well. Um but I want it to be durable. And if I made this rim here out of thin acrylic, um, I think it could get broken really easy. I think so it, yeah, I it could probably crack that. pretty easily. <clears throat> yeah. So if I made the whole thing out of metal, I'd have to ground it, which I could anyway. But right. um, the grounding bolt's right there. So I guess I could Yeah, it may already be touching it. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's 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 interesting because um, – that's I think that's the biggest thing, the biggest concern of everybody is like if it is metal, then I there's a possibility I'm gonna get shocked with that versus if it was something else. Now, what if you did if it was metal, but you had a rubber coating around the outside of it? You still want to ground it. 
I would ground it no matter ground. what if you do it in full metal. But I work with electricity every day. I'm not worried about it. Um, right. There's nothing in there that's going to shock you. It would if there was some bare wire in there. That whole lamp post is metal. It would light up anybody who uh, touches it. Lean so yeah, they, they'd lean I'm not. I'm not worried about it. This is this isn't new for me. So, but if you're not okay. used to it, definitely don't don't do it. Yeah, don't 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 do anything that you're not comfortable with on this. Yeah. And there's, I think it's it's always good to have a little bit of a healthy bit of fear on when you're doing stuff with electric because it's when you don't have that fear. Is when you're going to get hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so doesn't like things on does, electrical uh, boxes. Yeah. Wisconsin. Except to your local reviewer, people. it's and yeah, and that's that's true. So that's and just be honest with your reviewer. Um, if you're putting something out there and they question it, it's like, okay, why? Let me. Okay, can we talk? Can let me understand where they're coming from. Uh, you may not change their mind or anything like that, but that way you will help you understand the process and maybe know how you can do it next time or how you can make your caches better. They're there. They're not there to reject your cash. They're there to help you. Um, but there's certain things that different areas don't allow. There's certain laws that you may not even realize that you can't do South Carolina. They, there's certain areas that you can't have a guardrail po- uh, cash. You shouldn't have a guardrail to, cash. You should. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm just saying that guardrails like are there that. for a reason. So. Right. They don't put guardrails in places where cars don't run off roads. So, right, right. Uh, because anyway. it's, a thir- it's a through fair. So, they, you can't have caches on through fairs. So, um, and that's, you just got to look. That's what your reviewers are there for. I mean, that's why I always, before I put a cache out, I always get with my reviewer first before I even put it out there and say, okay, I'm looking at this area. When am I looking at any issues? So, and that's just, that's just because I know my reviewer and I, I communicate, but you can do that with any reviewer. Uh, out there just and i think they'd like that i know we have a reviewer in here uh tonight uh so uh just let us know if, if that if you'd rather somebody do that then then work with them so um all right chad anything else or uh yeah um just to kind of show because i don't know if i've ever shown oh okay i see what you sent me uh something yeah i have a couple here i'll send you to pull up while i'm talking okay. um you know they they don't always have to be bad, but make sure you you definitely should label them um, so people know, especially geocachers. Hopefully, they would know what they are. I still sometimes get questions that I, I, can't I know find, I've seen you, I've find the cache, like, and I'm like, it's, 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 like, it's right there. It's labeled geocache. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So um, uh, I'll send another one here. I'll send a couple more just to kind of pull some stuff up. In fact, okay. uh, someone was wanting to know last week, I actually mentioned about wanting to see some of the signage and this will show some of it um, here. I'll send you one more. Okay. Um, maybe, maybe not. Yeah. So Chad's sending me pictures right now. Um, so now I'll, I'll have graphics here built in a minute or so. So I think that might be, but I love, love um, all right. So here, um, that's Dolan good enough. says I always ask for cor- a coordinates check before I install a birdhouse cache. Yes, that's, that's really great here in Memphis. We have a ton of mystery puzzle caches and I'm always concerned. Um, if where I'm wanting to drop my cache, if I'm within the 10th of a mile of it, of when, where one of these final locations is, because we have so many of them. I, I pulled it up and there's, I'm trying to remember the exact number, but there are more. Most of the mystery caches, I think, are here in Shelby County. <laughs> Out of all, yeah. all the different traditionals, all the di- different caches in, in Shelby County, most of them are mystery caches. And that really messes up because it doesn't show it on the on the uh, page when you're right. trying to publish. But the reviewer, you're like, you make this thing, right? And it's perfect. You get it all set. You submit it for review. If you don't do the check, the coordinate check, Right. Um, and, uh, and then they're like, Oh, no, there's a, a mystery cache too close right or a puzzle, whatever it is. Right. Right. That and that's a final is somewhere too close. And I'm like, well, I just spent all that time doing this. So yeah. always, yeah. I mean, good ideas, always do a coordinate check and make sure the space is available. Yeah. That's, that's one of the biggest things, um, that I've always ran into is that not, is that issue here, especially here in Memphis. And mm-hmm. I'm about to get into a lot of that as we start really start really getting those caches out there for here for the summer. So. Oh yeah. So. You're going to have a fun time doing that. 
Yeah. Yep. That's coming up pretty quick. Okay. Well, um, so that was one idea for a lamppost cache. Okay. And that's the one I think I'm going to do now. If I'm going to, I'm planning on doing it with uh, the button you push um, to get into, to get into it. Uh, But, you know, after thinking about it, I do like just the idea of using a tot. I think that's just kind of fun. Um, that is, but fun. I, that's, and uh, it's less yeah. Too, usually. Now, another thing I thought would be fun is to three D print a miniature light post. Uh, <laughs> so have it in. Um, through all my many many things, you actually, if you look at Derek's channel last week, um. You'll see if you actually had it in something like this with a cap on it or something like this, and it just popped off. So if you printed a, a miniature light sc- lamp post that mounted to the cap of this and would go up and be a lamp post, and you just had to take this off and the log would be inside, I think that'd be fun. So just a little right. tiny miniature lamp post would be hilarious if you ask me. Yeah, um, that would be funny. And you can even I do a that solar. Right here yeah, next just to like me, that. So. So if you put a lamp post on top of it, you could do instead of the grate, you could just do a cap, uh, anything like that, and you set a little tiny miniature one. I think that would be, I think that'd be fun. I think you'd get a lot of favorites just because it's, it's funny. Um, you could even do it in your front yard for if you like caches right. in your front yard, just in your garden, um, and you'd probably, especially if you didn't have a lamp post, right? People would be like, "There's no lamp post around here." Um, they'd have to look at it. So I think that'd be fun. Um, LED fun. lights, yeah, Martin. Um, LED lights would be cool. You could use uh, solar. Um, right. You can get. You could even buy those little solar, solar things for five dollars. I think they're like five dollars for a little tiny cheap solar thing at yeah. Arbor Freight and take it apart. Um, anything like that would be fun. So, um, I got those pictures ready for you. Oh, go for it. Okay, let's pull them up. Okay, we'll so, see first. Uh, just pull it up. It doesn't matter. Okay, so this is one I have out there. And now, you know, people are saying they don't like electrical panel things. This is actually right next to about 10 other electrical panels. Um, it actually has a sticker you can't see that says um, electrical disconnected. Um, and then I have the geocache sticker up here. And then I have the regular logo the there. And this is an too. older one. The, the newer one actually says geocache on top too as well. And it has a GC code. So it's easily right. labeled. So you didn't find this one, I don't think, Derek, when you were in town. No, no, I didn't. This is the one it, I it hate. Still hot. I, we only got I, a couple of them while we're there that day. Yeah. It's, uh, I, I'm not a fan of this one, but it's the most favorited one out of everybody. And it's a basic cache. There's nothing. It's cool, <laughs> but there's not a lot to it. Right. <laughs> so uh, there's this one here. Um, again, every they look like little panels, which they are, little electrical box type things. Uh, but they're all labeled. So you clearly, if you're a geocacher, you can see that it's a geocache. And so this has right. several stages type of thing. Um, right. But, you know, bottom line, make sure you label them. If you like signs, the next one here, um, I like to get funny with them. And this one actually says no voltage uh, warning. Now, I believe, and if there's a reviewer on, I think they're yeah, maybe not finding our, just finding ways here. I don't believe uh, anything geocaches actually can say warning or danger on them anymore. Um, so I think that'd have to say notice, uh, but he could probably, uh, tell us, uh, right. but anyways, I thought this was funny and it gets a lot of favorite points just because it's no voltage, right. Instead of high voltage. Right. Um, so anyways, just things like that. I, I love putting these kind of things out there. Uh, every place I go to put them, this is at a park. So it was done through a city. They love it. They have no yeah. problem with it. So, um, you know, anyway. It's yeah, those are fun. I love. I was just kind of as you pull that up there, I was sitting there trying to stare at it and see what it was, how you get into it, and all that. Those are a lot of fun because I mean, it's we get so I want to say callous when we're looking at signs that we know if we think we know exactly what it says and mm-hmm. we just miss right over it. Yeah, because you're just gl- you're glancing at it real quick and you've seen that sign before, so you don't even give it a right. second thought mm-hmm. to actually read it. Right, and that one there actually it has that sign. There's actually two other containers below it that you actually have to get in first before you get into that upper one. Right. So just finding our way says, I'm not aware of anything in the guidelines regarding warning, but your mileage may vary. Yeah. Okay. So depending on the reviewer or what people want. So, yeah. Um, but yeah. So I thought I read that at some point somewhere recently, but I could be wrong. Right. Um, 
but, but most of them now I put notice, I think, on most of my right. stuff. And he's got a couple of caches out there with warning on them as well. So I think it's I think it's fun. But it is fun. It is fun. I like it. I have one that says what warning it may create addiction or something <laughs> like sa- satisfaction and addiction or something like that. So and you could always instead of saying warning, you say warring. Yeah, warring. <laughs> so so that is one idea or two ideas, right? Because we went over we went over this. Um, oh, what idea? Oh, the lamps go the miniature lamp skirt, and I may just right. print one just to do one for next for next week. So we'll we'll I'll work on these over this next week, and next week we'll go over some of them as well. Um, so the other thought for a lamp post uh, would be uh, just a simple thing like this. So if you can find a room for uh, something like this on there in there right um you could actually take this and do some some uh zip ties around inside the lamp post so it doesn't right. go anywhere if you want um and then you could actually put a cover on it with a hinge and do the same thing with a magnet so you could actually put this latch in there that actually be fairly simple to do um and then the cover right and i thought this. of and we'll, we'll get into here in a few minutes yeah. Yeah. We're going to get into doing some brainstorming on some other ideas as I have a couple of ideas that I've kind of played around with. And I just want to hear what others are thinking of too. I think I'm wondering if this might work or not and let's, let's throw it out there. I mean, that's what we, yeah. that's what we, that's, that's what, what this part of the show is about is brainstorming and getting ideas and then we'll see if, if we can come do it. So, so what I've done at I, one of my lamp posts too in the past, which I I've taken it down now because around here people get into stuff like this because they think there's, they could charge their cell phones um, <laughs> is this. And it was actually sitting this way. There's a pipe going down and all that pipe was, was a stake and you just stuck it in the ground right next to the lamp post. And if you put it in, right. Um, it, this will lean against the concrete pillar. Right. Um, and then you can actually put a lock on it if you want. Um, what, or what you could do is uh, put again, this type of thing on there. Um, and what I had did on the one that I had there, it actually ended up getting, uh, it's not there anymore because they ended up tearing down that parking lot and building a building. So uh, oh. it ended up disappearing. So, uh, anyways, you could cut this out square and mount something like this on there. And then it already has the hinge, right? So right. take the latch part off, use your magnetic latch. And that would be pretty cool in there. You could, even be- if you didn't have the room for this, just put in something flat behind here as well. And just make it really thin. Um, yeah. This is a blank cover for one of these too. So if you want to just to do that with a magnet or any kind of latch system, you could do that as well. Yeah. And I've not the, I've found one of those not to, as a gadget cache, but I have found one of those in South Carolina that was right next to a lamppost like that. It was leaning against yeah. it. It was one. I mean, that was, I thought it was when, when I found it, I thought it was really, really cool because it's just a creative idea and it's said in plain sight. Um, was at a hospital. So it, yeah. I just remember, I remember where it was at. Um, so that was just a really, really neat one. All right. So are we ready to get into some brainstorming, some stuff? Yeah, let's, quick? Well, yeah we can do some brainstorming. Let's do it. All right. So one of the ones that I thought of that might be kind of cool is, um, as everybody knows on a lot of my channels that watch my channel and stuff, I like read switches. So what if you had LEDs all underneath or UV light or whatever, so when you picked up the actual lamp skirt, it actually lit up underneath and had some other stuff going on in there that you that you could do. And you wouldn't have to have the batteries. All, you just have the magnet. So when the lamp skirt comes down, it connects, closes that, opens that circuit. Opens the circuit, it yeah. Closes it, and it show, does something up at the top. You can, I mean, you can do simple silicone or you could do, because silicone you can actually just scrape, cut off real easily so it wouldn't necessarily mm-hmm. be there forever. Um, so that was a thought I had and it could give reveal something. And then you had to do something with wires or something like that underneath there. And it just can uh, open up the cache. That was an idea that I, something I had, I mean, that any, any, any ways that we could think of expanding on that or what do you think, Chad? Yeah. I mean, I like that idea. I actually considered a read switch just to use 12 volts still to have a latch pop open. Like we like, right? but I like the idea of that. Now, I had a cache at one point that had LEDs you had to light up, and there was four of them. Um, there was eight wires, different colors, and 
once you got the LEDs light up, you'd have to put the red and the whatever pink together to complete right. that circuit. And you'd have to line those up perfectly or connect those to actually have it open up. And that was using the LEDs, which is a good idea. Uh, I like that idea, but I think if you just did LEDs underneath, but what would that LED represent? A code? Well, I didn't know if it would represent a code or it would just illuminate something else down there that you could, that it opened up like the light of the world, not light of the world. Uh, it would open up like the the little light that would go on, would be down there. So maybe you had like a diorama or something like that. As you lift it up and it showed stuff down there. Play some music. Play some music. Play it, something. Ooh. It would be a completely different sound than the sound as you come up. Um, like, they'd be like, so I don't you know. you did a multi. Music, like, now, that would be funny. The, the For the first person to ever find this, and there was like a brand new person finding it, and they lift it up, and it's like harp music as they lift it up. <gasps> <gasps> that would be fun. That would be fun. <laughs> so Does now, that happen every uh, time? <laughs> I, I think if you had – we have a shopping center – um that I have a lot of lamp posts at. And if what if I made a multi and you would have to use a magnet, you could actually use behind one of these, uh, you'd have to make it plastic or something instead of metal. And some of them are plastic. Um, if you just used a, a magnetic, put one of the, something that made noise as a read switch. Right. And it could either speak out coordinates or a code. Uh, once they ran it across there, so you could bolt this on with security screws. No one would know the difference. That's so thin, that sound thing. Um, you might have to make a little hole to have the sound come through or something, depending on how sealed that is. Um, but if you had that, it would give out coordinates for the next spot or a code. Um, right. That'd be cool. Uh, even if you had to read switch, uh, like you were talking about, and you held the magnet up to this and had lights come on. But I like the idea of the sound. If you lifted it up, disconnects it you could either have a switch or a read switch read switch would be sealed so in the weather it'd be okay um right. it, i like that sound idea yeah, I think I that'd be fun. Cool. burnt toast says like a hot cold game maybe yeah when they go to one it's like nope not this one go somewhere else you have to what's well, a good two idea left, two right or whatever and so the only thing about lamp posts um the the reason why I would never approve them on any of my properties, uh, besides what I'm going to do, but <laughs> is because of the scratching that happens in lamp posts yeah. when you lift up that skirt. Um, if you go to properties that have them, just look for the skirt that has the most scratches on it, and that's usually where the cash is. But right. we spent a lot of money to paint those posts, and I hate the scratches on them. So, but um, anyway. Uh, that's only that's one of the biggest reasons why I like lamp posts or would never approve them. Um, and I don't know any owner that would approve one because of that reason. Right. And I'm I'm debating on hiding one right now for a challenge that I'm supposed to be doing here for Shelby County. Um, but I'm I don't know if I want it as a lamp post or something. Not and it, I would have to be some type of gadget or creative cash just because it's just me. Um, but I'm trying to think, trying to find a really good place to do this, and that with everything else else is going on that I got to hide right now too. So, um, but I, I think, think the it, LED I, I like, light, the LED diorama would be amazing with sound. I think it would be too. That would be funny. And I have a sound sound thing around here that would just really, and you wouldn't need a lot of. I even if it was just like a single pill bottle, and we lifted it up, whoa. <laughs> Yeah, it's just, and you're not expecting it, right? You're not expecting yeah, you're, the you're sound. You're not expecting or the it at all. And, and you can do what was it, the CR twenty thirty two battery or whatever? Yeah, it yeah, and yeah. It, I, I'm sitting here looking on my board because I have one. I have the sound card over there. I think I'm trying to look and see where it's at. But and I know you have one that has just the simple the button that you'd push, and all you have to do is just. That's this one here. That one there, yeah. Pull so just uh, reconnect. Take the button out and just uh, run your read switch right there. Yeah, so whatever one's the button. I don't remember which one's recorded, which one's the button. Um, yeah, put your re hook, connect your read switch to the button one, and you'd be you'd be good to go. All right. Oh, so here. So here, you could here. even stick it in something to make it a little more waterproof as well. Like uh, they have these a lot smaller. Um, 
that you could actually stick it in. Right. One that's a lot flatter. So engineer 42 says plastic edge trim, like on a car door or sheet metal edge place around the inner opening of the LPC cover would stop the scratching. Yeah. I don't know if there's enough room for that in there. If it'd make it tougher, but I have to, I have to try it. I know there's room, but that's a good idea. Yeah. You may do that on, on this one. So it doesn't scratch and yes. you could be stealthier too. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. Stealthy is good. <laughs> it's kind of hard to be stealthy on an LPC when it goes. So anyway, um, so uh, here, someone... trying to read. Go ahead, Derek. I'll let you read it. No, I'm, I'm, I'm reading the, I'm reading the comment as well. So, um, oh, okay. So, um, Tyra 20, uh, Tyva, Tyva 28. The description uh, being my my name is Diorama and I'm an LPC holic. Whether you call it a lamp post cache or a lamp po pole cache, it is a mini replica in the woods. Okay, yeah, yeah, we've seen that one. Yeah, that we've seen that one. It's, it's and it's that is uh, uh, breaking the habit. A GC seven seven Y seven M in Long is in Long Island. Yeah, I remember when we did our under the lamp post. They they showed that one on there. I think Josh has found that one, or it was um, see my show. I think it was one. Yeah, one of the two found it. If it's in Long Island, it would probably be uh, see my. Show. They showed it in there as well. So that that yeah, I've, I've seen that one online. I haven't found it. Um, those are fun. So, um, but yeah, I think that I think doing the sound with the read switch would be funny and it, like i said it could just even be a simple bison tube or or uh, a preform or whatever underneath there and it's just that the sound would just whoa what is that and like you said have lights that the lights as well as would come up so it just lights it up <laughs> i think that'd be cool i'm looking at cash up right now uh to actually see it i don't know if there's any pictures of the diorama no so, no pictures of the diorama on the log. So, so go ahead um, and put in the chat what other ideas that you would have. Uh, what would you think of on there as well? Yeah. Um, so I like the idea of the diorama. Um, I've seen them as well online. So, um, you know, my biggest thing is, is, is uh, I don't know. Uh, I like the idea of doing a miniature lamppost. Even if you did it in the middle of the woods somewhere, right? Everybody, someone's going to be out there like, there's no lamp. LPC out here and then just have a small one or you can make it three feet tall. I mean, you could use PVC right. pipe and, and stuff. Um, what about a lamp post inside of a lamp post? Lamp post inside a lamp post. So you 3d print a little lamp post. So when you lift up the skirt, there's another lamp post and you have to lift They're up. Not, another you'd have to get it pretty tall. Piano. If you did a diorama, you could put it in there. Yeah. Uh, it's a double lamp post. So yeah, have a diorama <laughs> and the actual post. lamp post would actually be inside the lamp post. Yeah. I want to make sure that if we're calling it an LPC two, which we are right now and we're we're talking about it, is it actually has something to do with the lamp post. Some right. people will call it lamp post and then it's somewhere else next to it. And it's not really part of the lamp post. So it's not really an LPC. Right. Uh, I know someone did one and it's like 10 feet under in a storm drain. Well, that's not an LPC technically, right? So it's an under the lamp post. Is that how they call it? I uh, no, I guess not. that would if you said under the lamp post. Under the lamp post. I guess so, that's right. That was that was a Joshua Joshua video. That was a Did West he? Virginia Sam one. Yeah. Yeah, if it's under the lamp post and that's and it is in that thing, then that's perfect. Um, but uh yeah, I want to make sure that it is in there. Um to see <laughs> Quincy's saying, How about a spring like in a can of fake peanuts? Open the skirt and bang. Yeah, who's gonna reset that? I think it's cool. I think it'd be fun, and I'd love to get video of that. But yeah, uh, you gotta now, we'll, you gotta think about resetting it and be able to make it easy for people to just close right. it up. Otherwise, a lot of people just leave it open. Now um, there is, I have seen that, and this is something when you're doing the read switch. Remember that there are some lamp posts that are round, not necessarily square, so the skirt actually spins. So the reset on that would be completely different than if it was the other 
other way. If it's a square one, it's going to hit every time at the same place. So just think of that as well. Yeah. I've actually considered trying to print a whole new lamp post, 3D print one, really thick, mm -hmm. uh, and actually be able to print in different things underneath it, different containers or, or uh, uh, things to put stuff in, and actually be able to make it so you can you, uh, hide stuff up in it or buttons or something, and you'd never see it. But I don't know how well that would do over time, right. um, you know, and then just measuring it. I guess that wouldn't be a big deal designing it. Um, the other thing for lamp post too, that it's not really a gadget cache, um, is that I've liked is if you just take a square box like these, but a lot smaller, go something like this and you put a magnet on it, uh, on the backside and you stick it up underneath, uh, the lamp post, uh, people will lift it up and like, Oh, there's nothing here. Right. right. But they actually have to look under the lamp skirt itself yeah i've seen, i've it. yeah i found some there. of those before and the first time i looked i didn't find it and then i went back and it was up underneath stuck up in here glued there and i had to pull it off so yeah i've seen that i've seen some where you open it up the altoids thing and it's like no that's not it it says it's not here well it was actually inside the velcro that actually stuck it to the thing it was a double-sided velcro that had a pocket inside of it I've seen it that way. Um, there's a lot of different ways that I've seen them. Um, people being a little bit more creative with the lamp posts, but I really like, I like this idea. Now I have seen the same that has that, that socket or where the, when we were showing the, I'm gonna go back to that picture real quick. Um, you where how fake this, in there. With how this goes on here, they did an, a, another one and had it on the other side and it was completely 3d printed and stuck with the magnet so they're not even getting the, it is, the whole piece comes off so it's identical mm -hmm. to this completely 3d printed and painted to match it and it slips just magnetics onto the other side we had one like that here and it's been archived but um that one i think that's another really cool way of doing it as well yeah you could do a fake bee nest in there that opens up Oh, uh, underneath the lamp post, um, and, the rest, and then uh, and add the reed switch. So when you pick it up, it goes, zzz, you get the no. buzzing oh. sound. <laughs> <laughs> that would be that yeah, would be oh, cool. the, the blogs on that would be. I, I'd pay money to we'll sit there and watch people find it <laughs> <laughs> and have and have one one that kind of just moves as when it opens up and they hear it. <laughs> So I have a, a fire extinguisher alarm. Uh, I don't know if anybody's seen them, but all it is is a pressure switch. Okay. Um, let me see. And one of my thoughts was on it is to actually put it underneath the container. So when they lift the container, this alarm is so loud. Um, it's like ear piercing loud. And so once you would actually take the pressure of the container off, it would just alarm like crazy. And I thought that would be fun to uh to put on a cast just to be just to be evil um yeah. i know i have it i have so much stuff in my drawers it's time to time to clean stuff up um <laughs> uh, all right so i'm gonna go through some comments real here real quick bella moose says complicated lpcs can be a recipe for throw down containers true uh tom goes you just want someone to pee their pants or have a heart attack <laughs> <laughs> so. yeah isn't that yeah that's the fun part I mean, and we're, we're talking it's about creating the, an experience. So if you pee your pants, that's quite an experience. Yeah. Think about the log books. It's like, Hey, and here's the thing. They bring somebody else there just to watch the reaction. <laughs> now we're so, just getting mean. Yeah, um, it is getting mean. And that's, but it, it really depends on who's doing it. I mean, you got to be careful with that as well. So, um, well, I don't see the pressure switch. I know I have it somewhere. I might've put it on a, used on a container somewhere, but all it is is two pieces of metal that complete the circuit when it's pushed down. Uh, and then as soon as you release that, it opens the circuit up. Right. Um, the metals is not complete. So it's completes the circuit. And then when it doesn't, right. When they separate, uh, when it opens up, then the alarm goes off. Right. So, uh, GCD SK 11 says you guys are evil, but I like it. 
yeah that'd be, that'd be fun we should do a series of evil caches that would yeah, be evil evil mean caches i've got some ideas and i've talked to a couple of people on, on it so a few times um but yeah i think i mean there's you got that shock factor and i mean and including that if now that would be that, uh, talking about a mean one when that opens up if you had a the sound module in there that the one that we was they hit the button and it, and it pops open and, it, and they can get into it, have shocking sounds in the background, whatever in there. That would be another aspect of it too. Um, if you, I mean, just kind of thinking of different aspects that um, Tom's saying, he's got an uh, FTF on an LPC with a spring snake. I did take some, someone back to see their reaction. So, does that give it a favor point? Because now you got multiple people going back to it multiple times. It's all in reaction. So some, yeah, some people may say, I absolutely hated it because it scared the pee out of me or whatever. It's, it's kind of like the West Virginia Tim one that has the, the, the air horn in it. If you push the wrong button, I've had somebody, um, somebody that did, a friend of mine did a, a copy, copied that one and they had the air horn on it. And he was talking to a, a lady, talking to her as he was, as she was trying to find it. She couldn't figure out it. She hit that button, and all of a sudden she goes, ah, you made me pee my pants. And then when they actually met in person, that's how she introduced herself. <laughs> so, I mean, she gave a favor wow. point. So is that worth, is that it? Is that what you, but it's, it's it, they're remembering that experience. Um so I don't, as long I don't as it doesn't know. physically hurt you, I think it's a good idea. Right, right. But if and it can physically hurt you, I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah, and, and I would wouldn't put a warning. It. But if it scares somebody bad enough and they they have a bad heart, there's that's another issue well, too. So there's, I don't know. No, I mean physical, like hitting someone with something. Yeah. I, Anything like that. We've right. had this conversation before. Yeah. So yeah, so, and we're not going to go into it. <laughs> <laughs> um. Now, yeah, I mean, if you, there's going to be, if anybody goes to the 20th uh, this year, there'll be some great gadget caches there that will be surprises. You will be surprised um, when you when you find them. So I would definitely recommend finding the caches at the event. Um, so, but anyway, that's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, okay. Just, I would recommend going. Um so yeah, Chad actually put in here about adding a motor with an offset weight so it actually vibrates uh itself. Right. I mean, that's a good idea too. Um yeah, that got to power cool. it somehow and everything. But if you're sitting there watching the reaction, you got your stuff with you to to reset right. it or, uh, or Martin anything. says record somebody screaming, not Chad, of course. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Martin. Jerk. <laughs> 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 um but uh yeah, uh I, you know what we should do next week? I can play the reaction video or at least a little bit of it. Okay. And if you want to see people that, that get great reactions, I record uh, a couple of my caches uh, and do a reaction video. I will show it next week. I actually almost uploaded it for this week, uh, but next week I will upload it and we'll watch that. And it's so fun. It's when I go to this property, the first thing I do is go to the camera Right. And and start looking at and start recording people's reactions. So uh, I have a blast with it. So. All right, Chad. So that's so we're going to have that next week. You're also going to have the um, some more of the mock ups that are going to be done on the on these caches. Yes, or? I'll have some mock ups on some lamp posts, some different ideas we're coming up with. Again, if you have an idea you didn't mention tonight, if you're listening to us later on, um, or even lis uh, listening instead of watching and you haven't had a chance to comment, send us an email at gadgettalkpodcast at gmail.com. I can't even say that, right? Right. Um, with your idea. Um, yep. If you have pictures, send the pictures. We'd love to, to hear about your idea. Maybe we'll have a chance to make some. Uh, if you have made an evil or a fun, creative, or gadget lamppost cast, send us some love pictures. We'd it. love to have you on. Tell yep. us a little bit about it, what your thought process was. Yeah. Uh, even if you're only on for 10 minutes, you don't have to be on here for the whole hour if you don't want to be. Um, otherwise, if you do, you can just sit next to us and just chat. So yeah, and that's, um, and that's we would fun love too, to have listeners on. Love that. So, yes. Sorry. So I, make I, sure you send us an email. I got big bugs trying to hit my windows out here in my shop. And I'm like, what is that? 
<laughs> what is it's that? Uh, what are those called that came out last the year? The, the yeah. I don't know. They're, but it's like, because my lights in here, my shop are bright, as you can see, and they're hitting the wind <laughs> my windows. I don't have any windows. I'm in, I'm in a cave. I know. So, but all right. So I just want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. So send those emails, tag us on Instagram. Um, love to have you on. Um, I'm looking forward to next week to see what you, what you got, how it comes up and see if there's any issues that you ran into and uh, kind of playing with some ideas. So, yeah, that'll be fun. I'm looking forward to this. Actually, it's going to be pretty fun. Yeah. So, all right, everybody, we will see you next week.